Okay, friends, this is another moment where I want to discuss you something which I believe it is important concerning with the issue of salvation. And what I'm going to discuss with you is once saved, always saved statement. I want to prove it or to say something which is not known about once saved, always saved. Or you can be saved and later get lost. And what will make you to get lost? First, we have to focus, how do you get first, uh, first saved? We're going to use the Bible. How the first step for you to be saved, that to remain saved, that's where people misinterpret. And many people who, uh, who we see that they were saved and they have lost, most of them, they are not saved at first. They are the legion. And because they are the legion, and they cannot sustain that uh, movement they start with. They become cool, they get lost. And people conclude by saying that these were first saved and they have lost the salvation. But that's not how it is. Most of them, they are first not saved. When you consider the issue of 12 disciples, we can say that all of them were saved, but not. Judas was not saved. But what about others? They were saved and they remained saved. That's why at the end of, of, uh, of Jesus Christ's ministry, when he was praying, uh, the book of John chapter 17, he said that I've kept them that uh, you have given except the one, the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Why? Because Judas, his scarlet, was not saved at first. And so even others who leave the church or who leaves the congregation, they are first, mono, many of them, they are first not saved. So well, let us see, how do you get saved at first? The book of John chapter 6, verse 37, we get the clear answers. The Bible says, All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and him that comes to me I will no wise cast out. This is salvation. That we need to talk about. What do I mean? This one. That those who are brought by the Father to Jesus. Mostly remains in Jesus. It's not an easy task. To be saved and get lost. Most remain. I don't say it cannot happen. But it's difficult. Why? Why I say it's difficult? Because you said. Everyone who comes unto me. I shall not anyway cast him out. So it's not the work of Jesus Christ to cast anybody outside as long as he remains in him. And how does he remain in him? Through faith. Okay, because you, as you believe the first, you remain in believing. That's why the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 say that uh, for so God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not pass but have everlasting life. That believes is an act, the verb. So you keep believing, and then as you keep believing, you remain in Him. And so nothing can take you away. You will not lose your salvation at, 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 uh, at any time as long as you start in the right direction. You start with the right course. You are saved at first. And most of the others, we are not saved. And this verb of us tells that our salvation is, uh, is brought to us. Salvation is brought by the Holy Spirit. It's not something that we seek. Like, I've sought about salvation. That's why I've been saved and some, they're not saved because they did not struggle much. No. God leads our choice. Okay? Leads our hearts. And you know that you have a need to be saved. You don't seek things for, uh, for granted in God's uh, kingdom. I just want to answer this. Uh, to say this statement, collecting with the, when those people are going to those prophets. And the book of the, Salon, uh, the Second Thessalonians chapter 2 talks clearly about this. That some have, have, will be lost because they did not love the truth. And God allowed the spirit of delusions to come upon them so that they may believe the what? The lie. Because God leads your hearts that you are not interested in God's things. And so he gives you what you want. But those who have interest, they have the choice of God. God brings Jesus to them. 
And then when God brings Jesus to them, they accept Jesus. So they are first saved after when Jesus Christ is brought to them. You may ask a question, what, what those who have preached the gospel without Jesus Christ? Because they have the need, there's a point when they will know Jesus. That's why we find pastors who have saved God maybe 20, 70, years, uh, 50 years, but they were, never, they were never saved. But in their journey, they find a chance to know Jesus and get saved. In those old days, they were saving religion, but they have not met Jesus. And when they meet him, all the burdens are left down, and then they start to walk with Christ. But all the years, God was with them, preparing them to, to reach the point where they will see Jesus and then accept him. That's what we need. So let us go on. Jesus said that as long as you are in him, you are safe. Let me explain this. Because some of the people, they say it's easy when you are, you are saved, when you sin, you lose salvation. When you sin, you lose salvation. You have to repent your name to be written there. That's not. Because when we read the book of John chapter 15, we find the life story of a Christian. The life of soul of a Christian starts by abiding in Christ, okay? I'm the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every bunch in me that bears not fruit, it takes away. That's a, uh, a translation, what they wanted to intend, what the, the word used it is, I roll. And that means that it takes up, okay? When it takes up, means the branch that does not bear fruit, okay? That it lifts it up. So that it may bear fruit, and every branch that bears fruit, it parches it, and uh, it may bring forth more fruit, fruit, uh, more fruit, not more fruit, more fruit. Now you clean through the world that I've spoken to you about this meaning. I in you, and the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abides in the vine. No more. I'm vining your branches that abides in me. I'm in him. The same brings much, forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So what I wanted to say, it started with a person, with a, a first step. You abide in him, you don't bear fruit, okay, or fruit. What happens? It lifts you up. So the, not bearing fruit means what? You have received Jesus. You have uh, received uh, uh, salvation, okay? And Jesus Christ abides in you and you are in him. What happens? That's how salvation is. Salvation is not something which is sent. Eternal life is not something which is sent to you. It's not an email. It's not a letter. It's not a money. Salvation is Jesus Christ himself. So when you receive Jesus, sometimes you may not bear fruit. You may not live the life that Jesus Christ loves you to live. And then he's going to lift you up so that you may start at least to bear fruit. Okay, because some when they start, they, 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 they start to live the life which is perfect, but uh, which at least showed their, their confession. But some when they accept Jesus Christ, still they are confused, they're living like the people of the world. So that's why you can read the book, the, the book of Corinthians. Some of the things that we are doing in the church were just like pagans, told them they have to, to change. And then the second letter of the book of Corinthians. Um, Paul is just telling them that my first letter had done something. Means they were living the life which were fruitless, most of them. So he had to rebuke them, tell them, hey, you are Christians, you are born again. How, why, why can you, how can you live the life that like those of unbelievers? And so they repented and then they kept living right, okay? So a person have accepted Jesus Christ, but he doesn't bear fruit. He does not say, because you are living the life of sin, I'm going to cast you out. The, the only thing that Jesus Christ does to cast a person is the person who does not abide in him. As long as you abide in Christ, you have eternal life. But most of us, we are not in Christ. We are in religion. We join religion. I've become a Seventh-day Adventist. I've become a Baptist. And I've joined the church. Why? Because I want just to be good. I have no interest with Jesus. I have no interest with God. But I like the things of God. And so what? I will remain in the church and the time is going to come. I will get tired of the church and then I will leave. But God, when he sees that you have an interest, he brings Jesus to you. He has the process to pass through. That he, he protects you. You pray, he answers you, but you have not seen Jesus. And then as time goes on, he's going to bring the image of Jesus to you. And then you accept the son. 
when you accept Jesus Christ, the Son of God, then you have the life eternal. And from that moment, you have eternal life. And you, don't, you will never lose it unless when you deny Jesus. As long as you abide in him, he will, you, you will just pass through process. You, if you read this book of, of John chapter 15, you find that Christians, you are not just perfect as time. Okay? We are going to pass through process. And all those processes, if I die, I'm safe. I may not be bringing those fruit that God li likes, but still, I I'm safe. That's why we are safe in the hands of Jesus Christ. So, how do I conclude my statement of once saved, always saved? I don't say that if you are in Christ, you are being born again, you cannot live. You can live. How can you live when you make an another choice of leaving Jesus after finding another God? So you will leave. But it's not Jesus Christ who is going to chase you out. Yourself, you won't abide in him. So what it requires is you to abide in him. So what can cause a person to not abide in Christ as, uh, if he has accepted Jesus Christ as first? What makes him to lose salvation? That's how it is. Uh, you accept Jesus Christ. Literally, Jesus Christ himself. You have eternal life. You have relationship with heaven. Angels, yourself, you are the son of God. So you do not belong in this kingdom. You belong in another kingdom. You know yourself that have been saved. My father in heaven is my father. And uh, angels are friends. And Jesus Christ is my savior and my brother. And so what? You start to live the life which is just perfect, okay? You walk with him. But because the devil knows, the, the, the devil knows who is not on his side. And then what the devil does is start to pull you away from Jesus by bringing things which can make you uh, lose the focus of Jesus. And then it brings people away to the things. But still, but the same moment, Jesus Christ he will not leave you alone. He will keep supporting you that, hey, there's something bad is happening. You will fall into one scene. Jesus Christ will come. But let us assume all the signs of Jesus Christ you start to deny. Okay? To let us assume that you are in Christ and the devil is attacking you, bringing you some of the temptations and the warnings which comes from Jesus Christ. You don't, you don't see them. You pretend not to see them. Okay? And what happens when you keep living the life of sin? You stop focusing on Jesus and you start focusing on self. As long as that self keeps growing, keeps growing, the grace, you shorten the grace of God. That's you, you, when you go to the book of, of, of every chapter 14. This, the same thing here. Okay, let us read this. The book of every chapter... The book of Hebrew, chapter 14, 14 if I'm not mistaken, chapter 12, chapter 12, 14, yes, chapter 12, 14, say this, For the peace with all men and wholeness, without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, okay? Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of what? Of God. So this man living the life of sin, he falls on the grace of God. Okay? Lest any root of bitterness spring up, troubles you. So the root of bitterness starts because we are sinners, my friend. When we accept Jesus Christ, our body is not transformed. We remain with the sinful body. So still there's a root of sin in ourselves. So when the grace of God diminishes in us because of the temptations and our focus is has turned away from Jesus, then the root of evil starts to bring, to come, and then, and, and, and it troubles you. Okay? And so when this, the, the root of sin starts, what happens is that you start to lose the picture of Jesus. And then you may reach a moment when you may make a bad decision that I don't want, I have nothing to do with Jesus. That moment, you, when you say, I have nothing to do, by making your own choice, you are losing salvation. God will not allow the devil to force you to make a decision. Salvation, you will lose it by decision. And then what happens, God will try to, to intervene. You know, it's not an easy task. That's why I say, 99 sheep, he leaves and follows one. You know what it, does it mean? This has been lost. So he's going to try at a level best 
to make sure that you come back. It's not an instance for God's sake because you have turned away my eye, you have turned away from my grace, and then I leave you, God, because it's just it will follow you as long as you are his son. You make a first, you made the first choice of accepting Jesus Christ as a savior, my friend. Even if you fall to, to sin ten times, he will come because. He wants you to make a religious choice of saying, I don't want you, Jesus, but not to be forced to make a choice. He just come to show you who he is. He will come to, when maybe you have gone to sin, you're drinking, but still he will come because you are his son, but somewhere else in the territory of a neighbor, of, of, of a stranger. He will try his level best to bring you back. My friend, losing salvation is not an easy task, but does not mean that it can't happen. But it's not an easy. Most of the people whom we see that they have lost salvation, they have never got salvation in their lives. They were not saved. Most of them, they were not saved. They did not know Jesus. But they knew religion, most of them. And so because they knew religion, then they reach a moment where they can live. And the person may say, but some, they must manifest the power of Jesus Christ uh, in their ministry. Uh, things were moving like spectacular. Let's listen. I remember one of the quotations I learned from the I read from the book of Ellen G. White. She said this that there are some of the ministers when they go to do evangelism, they see power of God moving. It's not because of them, but God intervenes because He wants to save people. Okay? And so, because of the environment, because of the ministry, God will come to defend his name, not because of who you are. And so that's what we need to understand, my friend. The salvation will come when you make a choice. But we don't have to judge that this one is, belongs to God and this one does not. We have not been given that task. But the, the thing that we can do is to give our life to Jesus, to make a choice. But if I've not been saved, my friend, maybe I sense I don't love God, I can say, Father, please bring Jesus to me because the Bible says that whoever is brought by the Father, I will not cast him. Father, show me Jesus. Father, show me Jesus. Father, show me Jesus. You keep reading, you keep seeking because that's a choice and then you will never get lost. You will be saved because nobody will get saved, will get lost who had never got the chance to be saved. You need it, you will get it. But if you need the things of God, some of the people, they go to pastors, prophets, they need prayers. That's, I, need my, I need my marriage to be fine, but I have nothing to do with God. I need my business to stand up, but I have nothing to do with God. So he doesn't love God, but he loves the things of God. And God says, okay, you get it, just go away. And because you are my creature, I will not let, let you suffer. Sometimes he will allow them to get all what they want, but still, they will never get salvation because they never desired it. You know, the person who desires salvation is God alone who can lead that. It's not us. The word saying, I want to go in heaven does not mean that the person needs to go to heaven. God alone is the one who can lead the heart. So what do we have to do ourselves? Is to see, do we need to go in heaven? Do we need to stay with Jesus? Do we know what he has done for us? And my friend, by doing that, we are saved, my friend. We have to get salvation. It's there free. Salvation is there free for anybody. And to get lost, my friend, it's not an easy task. God will fight for you if you have accepted him and you receive the Jesus in your heart. But the devil has come and take you out of the truck, my friend. Jesus is not an easy person to let you go. He will not. It's a marriage, you know. You cannot allow your wife to be taken by somebody else and say, just, just go, it doesn't be forced. If you love that woman or that husband, you will not say easily, just go, let us do divorce. You will fight to your last drop of blood to say that unless he says, this is not a temptation, I just make it, I don't want this marriage. Then he say, just go, but painfully, that's what Jesus Christ does when we, when we turn away and we go to other systems of life and then he follows us. He tries by sending angels, sending some of the storms. Just wake us up. Hey, wake up. You are going somewhere to lose your salvation. Just turn back. And then before you die, God is intervenes because he wants you to defend on his side. Why? He doesn't want you to go there and die in sin because he knows 
that what you only need, what he needs is himself to vindicate that he's righteous. Okay? And uh, so he, that he wants you to return. And he said with him, so may bear fruits. But when you say, I don't want you, you leave. It's done deal. But God saved, saves even at the last moment of life of a person. Because he's in the business of saving now and not in the business of condemning, condemning, condemnation, judging people, telling them, go to hell. He's in the business of saving. My friend, may God bless you. Have a good day. Remember to subscribe, share, and give your comment. But also, you can give your support of this ministry through a link of Patreon there. May God bless you. Amen.